We now want to look at how that common ion effect that we saw in solubility example in the last video affects acid-base equilibrium. So our learning goals will be how these factors can still be used to shift the equilibrium of a weak acid simply by introducing some common ions to that, uh, to that mixture. So shifting weak acid equilibria, I want you to consider again the weak acid equilibrium, same one that we've seen many times before now, uh, where the weak acid HA is interacting with water to form its conjugate base, A minus, and hydronium ion. And again, these equilibrium constants are almost always uh, less than one. So how can we shift this? Well, we could add more weak acid. And what will happen to this? Well, according to Le Chatelier's principle, it'll resist the change, so equilibrium will shift to the right, and that will cause the pH to lower, so it will become uh, more, more acidic. If we added the conjugate base, that's on the product side, now we'll shift the equilibrium to the left, and that actually raises the pH. It becomes less acidic, because we've removed now some hydronium ions from the solution. If we add hydronium ions, the equilibrium will shift left also, because we're uh, adding more on the product side. But we've added hydronium ions, so it's still going to lower the pH. And this is something it's not obvious to uh, a casual observer, um, but you will always lower the pH when you add hydronium ion, even if it shifts this equilibrium from uh, products to reactants. If you add hydroxide ion, now that's not part of this equation, but what the hydroxide ion would do is it would react with the hydronium ions and remove them, turning them into water, remove them from the reaction mixture. So in this case, since we've removed one of the products, the equilibrium will shift to the right, but we've added hydroxide to do it, so it still raises the pH. Now there are some uh, fundamental principles here. Whenever, it doesn't matter what solution you have, if you add an acid, you will lower the pH. You will make it more acidic, no matter what, even if you shift the equilibrium in the other direction. If you add more hydroxide ion, you will raise the pH. You will make it less acidic. This is always going to be true. So I want you to be on the alert for that. Uh, if you get an answer that disagrees with that general notion, check again because you may have made a mistake. All right, I want to talk about polyprotic acids because they represent a, a particularly interesting case where we have common ions present. Now, some of the more common inorganic examples include carbonic acid, H2CO3, sulfuric acid, H2SO4, and phosphoric acid, H3PO4. There are a few other inorganic examples, but there are tons of organic uh, acids that are actually polyprotic acids. Now, these are going to involve a sequential acid dissociation process. So I'll, I'm going to use a, a, a hypothetical um, tri, triprotic uh, acid to illustrate this. But let's say that triprotic acid now undergoes a weak acid equilibrium to lose one proton. That means the H3A will be converted into H2A minus and it will create a hydronium ion. That has a weak, a weak acid equilibrium constant of Ka1, we'll call it, because this is the first proton being um, removed. And that Ka1 is going to be less than 1, typically. This is certainly true for phosphoric acid. It's not as true for sulfuric acid, but it's also true for carbonic acid. All right, now what can happen? Well, we can have now a second proton removed. So we would start with the conjugate base of the original acid, H2A minus, that now is our acid in the second proton removal. It will react with water. It will lose a proton to form another hydronium ion and will leave its conjugate base, which is HA2 minus. That will have an equilibrium constant of Ka2. And as I've noted over on the right-hand side, that second equilibrium constant is almost always, in fact, as far as I know, is always smaller than the first. And when you think about it, uh, the first one has to be the easiest one, um, just because uh, you don't have any charge on the ion. I think the charge makes a big difference. Um, removing a proton from a negatively charged species is probably much more difficult to do than removing it from a neutral species. Finally, there would be a third proton that could be removed, again, taking the conjugate base from the previous reaction, removing its proton, adding it to water to make a hydronium ion, and that will have an equilibrium constant of Ka3, which a general will be less than Ka2. So you see a general diminution, diminution of the equilibrium constant as we go down. Each successive H plus is harder to remove.
So let's see an example of this with oxalic acid. So oxalic acid is the uh, compound shown in the upper left corner of this blue box. And it can undergo its first uh, proton uh, dissociation to form uh, the C2O4H with a single minus charge in hydronium ion. And that has a Ka1 of 5.89 times 10 to the minus 2. Its second proton uh, removal uh, will leave it with, a, with a, a minus 2 charge, the oxalate ion, C2O4, uh, and another hydronium, and that has a Ka2 of 6.46 times 10 to the minus 5. Now the key here is there's a factor of a thousand between these two equilibrium constants. That's not unusual for a polyprotic acid to have that big a difference between their two, um, their two uh, proton removal e equilibria. Now what this means in a practical sense is that the, there is a dominant equilibrium. The first proton removal is a dominant equilibrium. So if I have a 0.1 molar oxalic acid solution, I can treat this as two separable uh, equilibrium problems. I'm going to let X equal the hydronium ion concentration and just solve the first equilibrium and see what we get. So we'll have an equilibrium constant of Ka1 that looks something like this, where it's equal to the oxalic, uh, the oxalate or hydrogen oxalate uh, ion times the hydronium ion divided by oxalic acid. So it'll be x squared over 0.1 minus x. And I'm, I'm relying on your ability to set up the ICE table for this, but uh, that's typically what it will look like is x squared divided by the initial concentration of the acid minus x in the, new, in the denominator. All right, and that's going to equal the uh, equilibrium constant for the first proton removal, which is 0 0.0589. When we solve for x in this case, we'll find that it's equal to 0 0.0528, and that means that its pH is going to be 1.277. So it's actually a fairly acidic uh, acid, even though it's a weak acid. Now what I want to do is start with this. We're going to start uh, with an initial concentration of hydronium ion now of 0 0.0528, which is the answer for this. That's also going to be the initial concentration of the conjugate base to oxalic acid. And those are going to be our initial conditions for the second proton removal. So let's see what that looks like. All right, we're going to set up the ICE table for this, and I'm going to take a shortcut and just show it to you. Notice that the initial concentrations for the um, conjugate base to the oxalic acid, HC2O4 minus, uh, is 0 0.0528. That was the end point of the first equilibrium. The starting point for hydronium ion is also 0 0.0528, but we don't yet have any of the uh, pure oxalate ion in there, so its initial concentration is zero. So all of those numbers come from the previous equilibrium. Now when we uh, remove the second proton, the HC2O4 minus is going to lose some amount, and that same amount is going to be added to the hydronium ion and is going to be added to the oxalate ion. So we'll have minus x, plus x, and plus x. So when we add those together, we get the column, uh, we get the row for E, which is the sum of those two. And that's what we need to plug into our equilibrium constant expression. So this is what it looks like. So there's the uh, expression for what the equilibrium constant is made of, the concentrations. So we're going to end up having an equation that looks like x times the quantity 0 0.0528 plus x divided by the quantity 0 0.0528 minus x. Okay, the 0.528 plus x is the hydronium ion concentration. The 0 0.0528 minus x is that HC2O4 minus the conjugate base to oxalic acid. And that's going to be equal to the second equilibrium constant, which is 0 0.0000646. Okay, now in, in this case, the X here represents the concentration of the oxalate ion. And in order to get the hydronium ion concentration, I'm going to have to add that X to 0 0.0528. So when I solve this, I'll find that x is equal to 0 0.0000644. All right, so now when I add it to the hydronium ion concentration, I'm going to get 0 0.0529. Well, it started at 0 0.0528, so the pH now is 1.276, only slightly more acidic than it was for the first one. So we can see that in the case of oxalic acid, really most of the acidity is coming from the removal of the first proton. The second proton really does not shift the pH very much. And this is not, untyp not untypical of uh, different uh, polyprotic acids.